Alright, so I think there's one thing we can all agree upon. Soviet and Russian gas masks are cool. And not only are they cool, they are also really affordable, or at least in the, in the case of this uh, Mag 3 LMP MK4, cheaper than their direct Western equivalents. So because of their relative affordability, they are also typically the first mass of a collector. If you're someone, if, let's say someone is uh, looking to get into uh, collecting gas masks or is just looking forward to owning something cool to LARP or maybe to join a protest or something, they were gonna log on to eBay, look for, search the term gas mask, and typically the first thing they'll find that is cheap is a GP5, so they'll boom, they'll buy that. However, uh, Russian and Soviet gas masks are typically gauze threaded. Same with a lot of uh, Chinese gas masks, such as this, uh, this uh, Type 65 right here. Uh, no, no, sorry, not Type 65, Type 69. Nice, thanks. And the problem with them is they are gauze threaded. If I remember correctly, the proper designation is RD40 times 4, all in metric. So, and um, why is it a problem that they are gauze threaded? Why is them being gauze threaded a problem? Well, let's say you are living in a Western country such as the US or in the U European Union. Filters you have, you know, ready access to will be NATO uh, Stanite 4155 threaded or uh, RD40 times 1 7 inch threaded, which are filters like this. Let me focus. Like this uh, MSA filter right here. Now, and let me just demonstrate to you what the issue is. Say you go onto eBay and you buy your first mask and it's a, you know, GP5N, really cheap, $12. And then you go ahead and you just buy the first filter you see, and maybe that's an MSA filter right here. Now there's an issue. Whew. Yeah, the filter will not engage the threads. Well, this is as far as it goes. And uh, if I do it any further, I'll, f I'll need to force it and it'll probably damage the thread on the gas mask, so. Yeah, so that is the issue that anyone who has a Russian or Soviet gas mask will be painfully aware of. They are not, you know, they are not compatible with filters you can readily get in the West. And the filters that do come with these gas masks, such as this GP5 filter right here. Yep. The issue with these filters, these original filters, is that number one, they are long out of date and uh, their effectiveness against, you know, uh, vapors, you know, especially toxic vapors, toxic and deadly vapors are highly questionable. And not only that, there is a substantial safety issue of them, of there being a asbestos in the particulate or aerosol filter section. So those are reasons why a lot of people who are in the know, who buy Russian masks, generally you don't see them using filters such as this. All right, now that that is covered, let's talk about what our options are if we actually want to use our Soviet Gosford masks or modern Russian Gosford masks or ch earlier Chinese Gosford masks to protect us against actual threats. Now, luckily for us, there is another massive country on Earth that also mass produces Gosford masks and filters. That is China. So today we're going to look at some of the modern production Chinese filters that are quite cheap and r readily available and we're going to be testing out how well they work with a Soviet GP5M which is very representative of uh, early Soviet metallic uh, metallic uh, gauss 40 millimeter threads that you'll find on basically everything in the SHM41 and uh, GP5 family, or you know, SHM62, you know, basically masks that look like this, how well it worked with them. And we also have a Mag 3L from the Modern Russian Federation, which has a plastic 40 millimeter gauze port that is pretty representative of basically just um, plastic 40 millimeter threads of gauze 40 millimeter plastic threads from uh, late Soviet and, you know, modern Russian period, such as, uh, uh, PM, uh, PMK2 and PMK3, the PPM88, and the MAG series, such as this mask. And then we also have a PMK4 with a, quite a special 40 millimeter thread that we'll get into later. But this will be representative of pretty much the latest generation 
of a Russian service mask, however, with a quirk that I'll get into later. All right, and just to, you know, and just for fun, we're also going to fit all of these filters firstly to the Type 65 to see how they work against, you know, uh, the masks that are produced by the same country. So that's that. Let's move on to explaining, uh, to introducing the filters. Now, let's start from the left and work our way to the right. So on the leftmost here, we have a TF1 type A2P3 filter. And this costs uh, brand new from TF with a you know regulation five year shelf life. And let me just get this out of the way first. All of these filters you see here will have a regulation five year shelf life. And by regulation five year shelf life, I mean that um, whatever uh, agency here in China or indeed around the world, you know, prote labor protection agencies or safety management agencies around the world will mandate a shelf life for industrial filters and that is typically five years all of these filters will work as long as they're sealed properly will pretty much maintain their effectiveness well beyond five years how long not sure but definitely well beyond five years maybe even 10 years but then because there are regulations in place they cannot you know put you know unlimited shelf life on the filters so manufacturers have to put a five-year shelf life on their filters. So let's just get that out of the way first. So let's move on to explaining, uh, to introducing our filters. So first up is the TF1 type made by TF. And this in particular is an A2P3 filter that costs a uh, 10 US bucks, brand new from TF. And uh, they also make a um, ABEC P3 version. And ABEC P3 is pretty much what you want to use if you get into something like a CBRN situation. And that one is a little bit more expensive at, uh, if I remember correctly, it should be 14 bucks, brand new from uh, TF, directly from TF. So yeah, there is that. Now, and this is what it looks like in this packaging. Again, same filter, A2P3. All right. And next, moving on, we have a TFP3 filter. So this is just a particle filter, you know, without the uh, activated carbon, you know, vapor filter section. And this uh, brand new from TF will cost you uh, just nine bucks. And this is what it looks like in its packaging and documents. Yeah, yeah. And next up, we have a TF conformal filter that is used with their uh, TF-12D series, a, a still a prototype face mask from TF. And this is the most expensive of the lot. And this is also an A2P3 protection and A2 being organic vapor and P3 being, you know, all of the particle threats. And this filter is their most expensive because right now it's still on a, still on a series of uh, limited production runs. So they only make a few of these uh, very small batches of this filter per run. So these will cost you uh, 15 bucks. However, they are available and 15 bucks for a brand new A2P3 filter is still pretty cheap, you know, all things considered. So that's that and that's what it looks like in its packaging, pretty simple. And then let's just say um, over here, we have a leader filter and let's just say that you're a European uh, factory or you know you're some industrial complex in Europe that wants to you know, source a lot of gas filters to protect your workers and to do that I think you will actually have to you know follow you know European uh, labor safety laws and regulations and all that and you'll need to you know uh, buy a filter that has European certifications and guess what this leader gas threader filter does have if I, it will focus properly it does have European certifications. They actually went to the trouble of getting it certified for use in Europe. And all of that will be in their manual right here. But yeah, this is what it looks like, packaged, so. And yeah, so this uh, LIDA European certified filter will cost you back around uh, 12 bucks. And this one is an A2P3, uh, but they also make ones in uh, B2P3, E2P3, and you know, uh, K2P3, so there's that. Now, the last filter on the right is a Chinese PLA CBRN filter that's issued with, you know, Masa FMJ 05, 08, and 09. And yeah, it has the same, you know, particle filter, P3, and activated carbon section. And if I remember correctly, this should be A, B, and E. No ammonia, but, you know, 
organic vapors and organic vapors and acidic acids, which is pretty much the whole spectrum of, you know, military CBRN agents, you know, military chemical warfare agents. Alright, now that that's, those are the filters introduced, and alright, let's just get this out of the way. So a lot of people are kind of worried that, you know, about asbestos and everything, so let me just put this, let me just, you know, point this out right away. So these Chinese filters use modern HEPA filters, and modern HEPA filters are made out of plastic fibers, not, you know, cardboard and asbestos mix like the Soviet filters. And um, pretty much all modern HEPA filters are made out of plastic fibers, and uh, a lot of people uh, confuse these with uh, paper. Well. Uh, I guess, you know, paper HEPA is technically still a correct term, but these aren't made out of, you know, paper fibers. These are made out these are made out of plastic fibers. So let's just get it out of the way. These use modern HEPA filters and do not contain any asbestos, without exception, because it's not actually illegal to make shit out of asbestos in China. So yeah, let's just get it out of the way. Same here. Paper HEPA, I mean paper HEPA, or you know, plastic fiber HEPA, modern HEPA. Modern HEPA. So yeah, just getting that out of the way. No asbestos, safe to use. Ah, there we go. Ah, okay, so now let's start testing the filters with the masks. Alright, let's start the test. We'll begin with a Type 65. And this should pretty much just work with, you know, all the filters here. Let's start with, you know, the TF1 Type A2P3. Also available in a back P3 filter uh, variant. Boom. It goes in without resistance and it engages the O-ring. Thank you. Nice. Next up is the TF P3 filter that I can't get it to focus properly. Come on camera. Thank you. Yep. Goes in without resistance and it engages the O-ring. Yep. Nice. Next up is the uh, conformal A2P3 filter from TF as well and it goes in well <laughs> the conformal filter rubs against the lens but yeah it goes in and it engages the o-ring properly and yeah goes in without resistance engages the o-ring properly nice so yeah those work without surprise not that we're surprised or anything okay so now it's the European certified Lida gauss threader filter and it goes in Engages the O-ring. Nice. And the next and last, last up, we have the Chinese BRN filter. And yeah, old PLA mask, brand new modern PLA filter. Will they work? Of course they will. <laughs> yep, goes in without resistance, you know, engages the O-ring nicely. That's that. Alright, so that's the Type 65 tested, let's move on. Alright, now let's move on to the GP5M. With a metallic thread that's pretty representative of, you know, uh, pretty much all metallic threads in the GP5M family. And uh, let's just get this right out of the way before we start, is that this thread on GP5 series aren't particularly well made, and uh, depending on how the plane is applied and how, you know, uh, this thread is made, it can grind quite a bit, even with the original GP5 filter. In fact, it does quite it does grind with the filter that it came with, with the GP5 filter that it came with just a little bit. So now that, that is out of out of the way, and yeah, just a filter a thread to thread consistency on the GP5 series isn't exactly great. But yeah, let's just start testing it anyway. So let's start with the TF1 and you can feel it, uh, yeah, there, it is touching the paint on the sides, but yeah, it goes in with relatively no little resistance and it engages the O-ring properly and you can feel it, yep, you can feel it touching the O-ring, yeah. So yeah, it works. And then we have the TF Plastic P3 filter, and make sure you're not cross-threading it, and boom, yeah, it goes in without resistance and it, touch, and it just engages the O-ring nicely. Next up we have the TF conformal filter A2P3 and yeah it goes in and engages the o-ring nicely without any resistance which is nice nice the TF plastic thread of the plastic uh, material filters really do seem to be working really nicely with gauss mask and then we have the European certified 
leader a2p3 filters yep it, yeah it does have that issue where typical you know metallic filter issue where you know paint uh, on paint you will get a little bit of rubbing but yeah it goes in with basically but yeah uh, it goes in without significant resistance and yeah it engages the o-ring nicely and last up we have the T, uh, the PLA CBRN filter and it yep also goes in nicely without resistance and engages the o-ring well um as little as resistance as the as the you know shoddily made and painted thread will allow but yeah all these work and they won't damage your thread the thread on your gp5m which is nice all right so that's the gp5m out of the way let's test it with the max vl and this is pretty much just uh, pretty res this plastic thread right here is pretty representative of the thread that you'll get on masks such as the PMK2, PMK3, PPM88, you know, things like that. So let's start with the uh, TF1 type, A2P3. And uh, not surprisingly, it goes in, no resistance and engages the O-ring, which is nice. All right. But here, next stop is the TF P3 filter. Let me just refocus the camera. And it goes in, no resistance, and it engages the O-ring nicely as well. You can feel it. All right, next up is the conformal. TF conformal filter, and it goes in, no resistance at all. And, oh, it is, uh, there is some conflict here. It is actually touching this side, and uh, I'm not sure if it... Oh yeah, it's it's engaging the O-ring. So, oh wow, that is a really tight fit. <laughs> That's a really tight fit, but hey, it looks fucking cool. And uh, yeah, it engages. Yeah, I can feel it engaging the O-ring. So yeah, that's that. It'll work. And then we have the European certified Lida A2P3. Goes in without resistance, engages the O-ring. Nice. And then we have. A, the Chinese CBRN filter goes in and engages the ring. Nice. Oh yeah, let me just point this out away. Um, some uh, this is the. Let me take a look. Yeah. But anyways, I have heard of um, Mag three Ls that are you know Mag threes and you know Mag series masks that have you know NATO threads or you know uh, threads that are compatible with NATO filters. However, this Mag three L in particular isn't. I shall demonstrate and uh, yeah it's not engaging and uh, well it, it has engaged but yeah it's not going and I don't want to force it because you know I actually you know like this mask so I don't want to break the plastic thread so yeah this is still a Gauss 40 millimeter plastic thread it's not NATO or at least not NATO compatible all right now let's move on to the elephant in the room I already mentioned that this is special and um, I had a PMKS, so just just to get out of the way, I had a PMKS, and the PMKS would work with all the filters here. And uh, I will bring up a picture that shows that. However, I was quite surprised that when I got my PMK4, I just I found out that um, for some reason the PMK4 thread is different from the PMKS thread, and uh, I can't really get any of the filters that commonly work with uh, ghost masks to work with the PMK4 and yeah this is not even yeah uh, well it, it has engaged but it's yeah it's, it's this one is not going in let's test out the P3 the P3 is okay so the TF P3 will actually go in and work And yeah, it actually has no resistance at all, which is interesting. And let's test out the uh, conformal uh, A2P3 from TF, which is the one I've been using with this mask. I just haven't tested out a P3 yet, but yeah. Okay, it works. Goes in without resistance and goes in nicely and, you know, engages the O-ring nicely. And yeah, I have tested with this. I've been wearing this mask for hours with this and it works. And to test out the LEED, the European Certified Filter, and yeah, I already tested this one, it doesn't, just doesn't work, and I don't want to force anything. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't work. 
And then uh, I haven't tested this one yet, but yeah, this is the PLA CBRN filter, and yeah, probably probably sure that yeah, it's not gonna go in any further. So yeah, there we go. So for our little special child in the room, our little elephant in the room, the PMK4, it will only work with the TF plastic filters for some reason. Even though the PMKS, which supposedly has the exact same thread, works with pretty much all the filters I've tried. And not only that, uh, I've also used the GP7. I also had the GP7 and also had the GP21. And all of those will also work with any of the filters on the table without fail. But for some reason, PMK4, yeah. But yeah, that's that. And, uh,. Hit me up if you want any of these filters, I can actually supply these filters, although um, they won't be quite, you know, MSRP, uh, you know, they won't be uh, just uh, direct from TF prices, I'll probably have to charge a little bit of markup to cover the shipping and everything, but cover shipping, handling, currency transactions and all that, but hey, that's that, thanks for watching, and uh, have an awesome day.